we know how the story ends. Uh, here, the president, Mrs. Kennedy, arrive at Love Field uh, about noontime, November 22nd, 1963. And this is the first domestic trip that she has made with him in his presidency. She did go abroad, but Mrs. Kennedy was not uh, really into the grassroots of politics and campaigning. She particularly didn't like it, but she told her husband after she returned from a trip in the Mediterranean that he had sent her on with her sister and Franklin Roosevelt Jr. to sail around the Mediterranean with Aristotle Onassis, a family friend, that that would help her come out of her postpartum depression and the loss of baby Patrick. So she offered to go with him on this trip to Texas, which was both as a fundraiser for the 64 campaign, a bit of an unofficial kickoff for his reelection campaign in 64, but also to mend fences between liberals and conservatives in the Democratic Party in Texas, which had so many electoral votes and was key to winning the presidency again. Um, I always wish that I didn't have to show this slide, but uh, just, just after this photo on the left is taken, shots are fired at the president. Uh, in the six seconds it took to fire off those shots, Mrs. Kennedy, it is said, lost her husband, her home, and her job. But she had enough courage to come out of her compartment in Air Force One with the new president, Lyndon Johnson, and his wife, the new first lady, uh, Lady Bird, still sitting on the tarmac at Love Field before they take off with the president's body uh, in a uh, coffin in the back of the plane um, that he asked, Lyndon Johnson asked Mrs. Kennedy, would she come and stand with him to show carrying on the torch to the next administration for the world? And she um, washes her face she washes some of the gore from her hair, combs it out. Um, the photograph was taken by the White House photographer, Cecil Stoughton, who uh, graciously photographs her from the waist up because her skirt and her stockings are uh, stained with her husband's blood. Lady Bird said, Mrs. Kennedy, don't you want to change? And she said, no, I don't wanna change my clothing. I want them to see what they've done to my husband. And then she leads the United States in a way the world as our mourner in chief throughout these three days of the next Saturday, Sunday and Monday when the president is buried at Arlington and she lights the eternal flame there. Here she is with her brother-in-law and sister-in-law, Robert Kennedy, Pat Kennedy Lawford uh, with Caroline and John at her side coming out of the Capitol after the ceremony for the president's line uh, in state there. And she made it through nearly all of those ceremonies without shedding a tear, which truly was a profile in courage. And so her last physical symbol, uh, this is her grave marker. The president has a similar grave marker uh, at uh, the Arlington cemetery where she wanted him to be buried just down from the Custis Lee mansion. And she had remembered the eternal flame for the unknown soldier under the Arc de Triomphe in Paris. And so she asked Arlington if they could uh, help her with this symbol for her husband of the eternal flame to mark the, as he had said, the passing of the torch to the new generation. He had just visited Arlington for uh, the Veterans Day celebration and commemoration a few days before. And he said, as he looked out just below the Custis Lee Mansion, I could stay here forever. So it was thought that would be the perfect resting place for him. And of course, Mrs. Kennedy is there now with him.